Welcome to Marifado. Is Cambodia black? Part 1. Is Cambodia black? Indigenous black tribes still alive but vanishing in Southeast Asia. Millions of people living in Cambodia were killed during the brutal regime of Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge. Their bodies were buried in mass graves that became known as uh, killing fields. A crude description of the horrors of the Khmer Rouge era was the genocide in Cambodia, ethnic cleansing, or pure madness. You ask any scholar or scholars what race were these people, they will say Asians. If I say they were Bantus, then there is a problem. We encourage you to watch one of our videos. Uh, a series of videos because Southeast Asian countries have gone through similar horrific destruction of indigenous civilizations. We mourn them daily. Let's continue to look into this very interesting topic. What we know is that Pol Pot was a Christian, a Catholic, and a French educated intellectual scholar. Was he engaged in brutal ethnic cleansing? His organization, known as the Khmer Rouge, power only for four years, but murdered almost three million people. Who did he target? If you don't smell a red, wait for the next reality check. Paul Pot became a murderer after visiting the mass murderer, Mao. Just think about this. But before you relax, let us throw in another one. Throughout the 1980s, the Khmer Rouge received arms from China and political support from the United States. Why? I, your mental nose is still not smelling the right? Ask scholars today, what race were these people that were being butchered and genocide committed over them? And they will not say they were Bantus or Muntu. Anyway, let us ask a straightforward question. Was Cambodia black? Are there melanin dominant people in Cambodia today? We know that Pol Pot's plan was to achieve a Maoist communism without taking intermediate step of socialism as prescribed by Marx. But what we have realized is he might have been engaged in genocide and ethnic cleansing. Let us look at an aspect that has never been considered in any explanation about Cambodia. This is the aspect of the proof of the indigenous peoples of Cambodia. Intriguingly, the Cambodian population are clustered with populations from India, Dravidian, Indo-European and Austro-Asiatic speaking populations. Andaman Islanders, Australia Aborigines, and Madagascar, but relatively diverged from other populations. Austronesian, Dyke, and Hmong Mian speaking populations in mainland Southeast Asia, Southern China. In addition, with the Austro Asiatic language family, Cambodians are closer to Austro Asiatic speaking population from India and the Andaman Islands than to those from mainland. Southeast Asia and Southern China. Most explanations will stop here. But the story leads elsewhere. This is from one of the genetic studies that have been done and explanations given. Moreover, we observe a relatively close relationship between Cambodians and populations from the Indian subcontinent, supporting the earliest coastal route of migration of modern humans from Africa into mainland Southeast Asia by way of the Indian subcontinent some 60,000 years ago. The indigenous people are Bantus. This is from the analysis 
of mitochondrial genome diversity that identifies new and ancient maternal lineages in Cambodian aborigines. This is the website where you can go and study this in detail. Other than this scientific clue, there are heaps of pictorial proof that a whitewashing of the indigenous African race has occurred or is occurring in Southeast Asia, specifically in Cambodia and many other places that we have looked for. These are the people that you will see today if you go on a search of people in Cambodia. There is only possibility of one pure moon to there. The rest are, to say the least, mulattoes or makarad. The descendants of Chinese now dominate the whole space. These are modern Cambodians. Are these indigenous people? She looks Chinese. They look Chinese. These are cultural representatives, and now they are saying they are uh, Cambodians or Kamas. This is what we see today. And the political leaders, this is the Prime Minister of Cambodia, he is Chinese. This is King Norodon Siha, Nok of Cambodia, he is not an indigenous, he doesn't look indigenous at all. If you look at him, King Sisowaf, this is 1840, seated on his desk, he looks more of a Muntu and indigenous individual. He's different from that. Despite that, this is black and white. It looks different from this. Let's continue. Ancient Cambodia, ancient to modern history, or a civilization also known as Funan. There are many, many, many others. What is now Cambodia was an ancient civilization starting as early as 4200 BCE before the Common Era. Ports from that time have been found in northeast Cambodia and are similar to ones you will find today in Phnom Penh, Orose Market. Then came the Funan Kingdom, and then the Chenla Kingdom. Next was the Golden Age of the Cambodian Civilization, the Kama Empire. These are the Funani. They don't look Chinese. These are Kama. He looks Bantu. He's a Muntu. Exactly with paper cone hair, uh, blunt nose, bull mouth, dolicephatic chin. This is exactly the indigenous people, different from the popular that we are given. The Funani, they look more Bantu than Chinese. Look at that. They look more Bantu than Chinese. Between the 9th and 13th century, the Kama Empire was one of the most powerful in Southeast Asia. This is what they built, Wango, Ango, city. The Kama Empire's capital city was Angkiko. Our ancestors left heaps of proof. We have their statues, yet modern scholars will rarely discuss that or rarely tell you that they become confused and they claim that these are not black Africans and they say these are Asians or Austronesians. Cambodia was black. It is still black. They are just hiding it from you. Clearly see with your eyes the difference between these Chinese the current modern Cambodians and the indigenous ancient Cambodians. This is, these are the people that build Angiko Wat here. There are no two ways about that. That's our Africans, proper Bantus or melanin dominant humans. Indeed, we have fallen from a very high throne to the dustbin. We know that our water supplies and other problems hastened the end of Angkorian monarchy. And the final straw was when the Thais captured Angkor in 1431, pairing Kama migration toward the Phnom Penh area. From 1500 until the arrival of the French in 1863, Cambodia was pushed and pulled between its now more powerful neighbors, the Vietnamese and the Thais. During this time, Cambodia suffered great territorial losses. It was nearly swallowed up altogether. Yet, prior to all this, there was a pre angiko civilization known as Mekong Delta and in Peninsula uh, in the, uh, Thailand. She looks pretty Muntu, straightforward, a Bantu. Let's prove more about them here. pre angiko people, were they Chinese? No, they were more like a Bantu, Bantus. This is Black Buddha. He doesn't look Asian, that is Chinese, but African. 
There is again the sculpture of Shiva in the form of a human in the Kama art 7th century, more of a Muntu than anything else. There is Hari Hari, late 7th to 8th century. He looks more of a, a Muntu than anything else. These are Bantus. These are Melan dominant people. They, again, let's look at some of the leaders. This is 11th century Cambodian king, Surya Varaman. He looks more of a Muntu. It doesn't look like a, someone who you would say, oh, no, he's not a Bantu, he's an African. Again, Jai Maraman VII, the Kama king of Angiko, 14th century. This is found at the entrance of Angiko Tom. This photo is given by Hamara Holt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Muntu, Melan dominant human, a Bantu. This is a totemized uh, person. Now, in conclusion, therefore, the great classical civilizations of Southeast Asia are Angiko in Cambodia and Champa in Vietnam. Much of our knowledge of early Southeast Asia is derived from Chinese and Indian sources. The builders of Angiko were the Kamas. The Kama men were described by the Chinese as small and black. In modern times, as early as 1923, Harvard University anthropologist Roland Barrage Dixon noted that the ancient Kamas were physically marked by distinctly short stature, dark skin, curly or even frizzled hair, broad noses, and thick negroid lips. This puts the nail to all that you have heard that these people were not Africans. I've seen a lot of scholars never discussing that they were Bantus or they were melanin dominant people, but just saying they were uh, Austronesians or they were uh, Asians or Southeast Asians. These were Bantus. We are not discussing whether they came from Africa or whether they don't, didn't come from Africa, but they were still Bantus. You get this? More information from uh, the, this website, atlantablackstar.com. It's very, very important and very, very interesting. Do not miss our next uh, post. Is Cambodia Black? Part 2. Where more evidence and the proof will be put and final nails will be nailed on the coffin of lies, which assumes that Asia was not a Bantu civilization from China to India. We have indicated that ethnic cleansing activity took place in Cambodia. And when you ask scholars today what race was purged, their answers will mislead an honest seeker. Don't be misled anymore. It is all up to you to verify these facts that we are sharing Get in touch with us at join at marifado.com if you need resources, more resources to do your own further research. Let's meet again in part two is Cambodia a black. This picture is by LM Tumizulu of Hamiti Iburu Ethics Marifado. Join us at uh, join at marifado.com and subscribe to our channel. Share and comment. Till we meet again, Cambodia is black, was black, and will continue to hold the record that it was a Bantu melanin dominant society and civilization in Southeast Asia. Dupe, Siabonga, Tatenda, thank you, and course.